Sandra Scott. I'm married. I've got three children, two lovely grandchildren. Um, one's 15 this year and the other is 13 this year. Um, I'm retired, which is wonderful. I've always had a fairly busy life work-wise, but I, I think since being retired, one of the, the things is that you do actually, for a, for a short time anyway, feel isolated because you haven't got your you haven't got your occupation to hang your coat on so you think who am, who am I who who is Sandra and um, and to a certain extent that's how society does treat you you get isolated from the real world really it's it's um, I think it's important that you pull yourself back into the world and say hey I'm here and, and, and I think I do that, and I make a point of saying, look, I might be, you know, an old lady as such, but inside I, I, I still feel as though I'm 30 and I have something to offer. So, you know, don't dismiss me. I want to do something special. I want to do something that's a challenge, a real challenge. And I have challenged myself quite a lot over the last couple of years. but. I never really challenged myself really physically, something really that's out there, but not for an ordinary person. Well, the thing I'd really like to achieve this year is the Just Neighbour Challenge. That's my biggie. That's what I've been working on for quite a few months. Um, it's going to be difficult. I don't know whether it's achievable, to be honest, but I'm really going to have a go. I used to watch all the runners coming past the, the bungalow, but I was not a, if you like, a physical person at all. I've never done anything like that. But I thought, well, I'll have a go at that. And um, I started by trying to run down the lane, which, believe it or not, I, I couldn't do. I was unable to get from the bungalow to the bottom of the lane, which is just a few hundred yards. Um, so that was the start, really. And it developed from there. I wouldn't say overnight. I suddenly wanted to be a fell runner. I certainly didn't. It wasn't in my mindset at all. But it was certainly something that developed as time. Seven, and the good news is um, I've just found them um, they're about a mile down the road so um, 11 and a half hours pretty good going actually um, yeah amazing effort really good effort for Sandra she's amazed me today she really has good effort on the woman I did realise after I'd finished it that I was knackered. 
I really was. I just nothing left at all. Um, my head was up here, and I was like, "Oh, this is fantastic!" But my body, oh dear, I felt like an old lady. And I thought, "Well, I'm, I know I've got the Felsman coming up at the weekend, and that's a biggie." The way the Felsman works is tonight, and then it's Friday moment it will we'll be going off in our camper van to Threshfield and booking in and um, there there will be a kit check because obviously you're out on the mountains so you need all the usual things like bivy bag and first aid kits and, um, and then next morning they will bus you to Ingleton where the, um, the race starts. We start at nine o'clock and um, there are various checkpoints, in fact there are lots and lots of them all the way around, and, uh, and there are cut-off times. So I have to be careful really to keep looking at my, my little slip of paper which tells me what pace I ought to be doing to, to enable me to get through. And Sandra today is doing the Felsmon, which is a 61 mile uh, mountain marathon. Um, I've been with her a few times this morning, they set off at 9 and we're about something like 23 miles into it and she's looking really really tired. Um, yeah, I'm uh, a little bit worried actually that uh, she's really finding the uphills hard and they're still, you know, something like 38 miles to go yet. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm worried. I'm really worried. It's um, just gone half three in the morning. Um, I've uh, come out to catch up with uh, Sandra and Steve. Um, and I've just been to one of the checkpoints and found out that uh, they've actually retired the race. Um, I'm not sure what's gone on or what's happened, but I think Simon, hopefully, the other cameraman, was with them at the time. Oh, yeah. Sandra can't see anything. I was having great difficulties um, both going up and coming down because I couldn't see where my feet were going. You know, I realised that my vision was getting worse. You know. It just deteriorated really until the point where I'm going up uh, Dodd Fell. I just couldn't see any longer. I, I could just see a little patch in front of me. That was quite scary, really. I knew my race was over because I, I couldn't do it. But I couldn't make anybody out. It was like, like thick, thick, thick fog, you know. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, oh, it's just the wind and my eyes are sore. But you also think of other things. You think um, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, tired because the, the events are sort of building up now. Um, I think regarding my eyesight, um, it's a lot better. It's not completely better, but I, I, now that I know that it is the wind that has caused it, I'm, I'm, I'm more sort of laid back about it. 
I've got the fancy glasses, um, which I'll wear, and I should have been wearing, really, to protect my eyes. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll just see how we go. It, I, I'm not concerned that this is going to happen again, because this time I will know. I know that the wind, I, I had no idea the wind would do that damage because clearly I hadn't been out for hours and hours and hours when the wind was so severe. That's never happened before, so I hadn't experienced that. So I, I'm quite sure that now I'll be prepared. So if it's very windy or sunny, I'll have my specs on. So it's not something hanging over me. I'm, I'm not thinking, oh, I can't do these things. Although, having said that, every time you do one of these challenges and you go through a little bad patch, you think, what the hell are you doing, woman? You know, this is, this is ridiculous, you know. But, no, I'm looking for, I, I see it as like little building blocks, really. It's, I'm getting all this experience all at once, instead of having it sort of filtering in all through your life, or you, your adult life. All this, I'm just getting these great big lumps thrown at me of experience, and um, so it, it's making me feel quite good about it. Friday the 13th of July, and we've waited months for this day to come. Uh, we're three weeks later than we should have been for Sandra to do the Josh Nair challenge. Uh, that's basically because it's just rained non-stop for three weeks. It's been unbelievable. But we've got a break in the weather for this weekend. Sandra's ready to go. Eight thirty-five. We're at Pooley Bridge. Um, everybody's here that should be here is absolutely great. Couldn't ask for better weather really. It may rain later on, but I don't care. I'm really excited about it. I don't know how I'll be feeling next time you speak to me, but at the moment I'm feeling fine. Yeah, yeah just round here. Come on, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping me talking like that. Bye. 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 See you in the morning. <laughs> Can you hear me, Dan? Any sign of them, Dan? Okay, it's quarter past twelve at night and I've come up from Kirkstone Pass to catch up with Sandra and the running team. Um, she left Pooley Bridge at nine o'clock tonight, so it's been going a couple of hours. Um, the weather is perfect. It's cold. Um, visibility is good, there's a light breeze, um, she couldn't have a better evening for doing this tonight. Um, she should be getting to me about one o'clock and then I can carry on down to Kirkstone Pass with her, um, where she's going to take a ten minute break before she goes up the other side of Red Scree and then carries on over to Dunmel Rays. So what time do you make it? It's um, 2.50, centre three. Right. Oh, yeah? <laughs> no, no, you, you no, are, you're no, fine, you can that. easily make it up. Have your drink and get going. You'll be able to see where you're going shortly. Yeah. yeah. Have your drink It'll make a huge going. difference. Get going. Come on, you go, up you go. Come on, come on. We'll set off the catches up now. Ready, Steve? We're done, yeah. Put your clothes on the top. It's quarter past six and I can just see Sandra and the others just coming off Fairfield. Um, she seems to be doing okay. Tired, understandably. Glad to see her. Really glad to see you. Oh, 
Uh, it's one o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday and we've just had the news that Sandra has had to go down from State Pass. They came into Dunmail about an hour and 15 minutes down, something like that. And she seemed quite cheerful, but then she was uh, very slow um, going up uh, Steel Fell and uh, it's been reported her back was hurting, she's having problems with her back, um, which has happened before. Uh, so that took her, uh, what, what should have taken 40 minutes, took her uh, an hour and 20. Um, and then she was really struggling going across to high rays. So she came down and went down to Langdale from State Pass, so it's a real shame. Uh, great pity for her after all the work that she's done. Uh, so um, anyway, she'll she'll have to think about what's happened, um, how she's got on, um, and I'm hoping that she'll have the the strength to actually put it together and have another go. Um, anyway. Um. On the way down from High Race, on the way to Rosset Planet, going down to the, the Snake Pass bit, I, um, I just knew, just knew I couldn't, couldn't go any further. I was in so much pain. Um, it was at that point that I decided that I was going to, to stop. We went down to uh, Dungeon Gill. It must have taken us well over an hour and a half to get down because I was having to stop every two minutes. And although we had a laugh going down in all the pain because one of the things that Angela did say to me at one point was, well, you need a broken the back of it, so you're okay. Little did I know that I had actually done just that, mm. um, that I'd cracked three of my lumbar vertebra on the way down. Um, when I got down, um, obviously, I just felt <laughs> awful. I felt as though I'd let everybody down, and we were all con congregated in the, the the car park, you know, and everybody's chatting, and we think, I was sat in the front of the van thinking, well, you know, I just wanted to cry, really, but I couldn't with everybody. In fact, I feel all cracked from <laughs> talking about it now. Um, when Steve did arrive, I did have a little. Hmm. Sorry about this. Um, anyway, that was it. I failed on that occasion. I know now, when I look at it, I don't see it as a failure, but at that point I did. Um, I remember somebody saying something to me which didn't make me feel any better really and they said oh well don't worry there's other challenges and I thought no there's this challenge and I'm going to do it and that's what I'm going to do. I don't know. 
how are you doing, Sandra? Well done. Fantastic. I just can't believe I'm over the moon for you, honestly, I really am. Right, we've done the Felsman, jump to death, both of us, and Joss Naylor next. So, roll no, on. never mind fingers crossed. Roll on. Jump. Roll on. Away. So, um, tell us about the the challenge that uh, Sandra's got today. Well, it's one of the most beautiful challenges she'll ever do in her life, and uh, she'll be very relieved when she sees this little bridge here at the end. Then. Right, it's about um, twenty past twelve. Due to start off at. Um, 12.30, beautiful night. It looks about the weather is going to be absolutely ideal for me. The skies are clear, you can see the stars, it's really lovely. Um, I'm very apprehensive, but looking forward to it and hope it all goes well. So here goes, and see how we do. gone 12 o'clock midday so it's 11 and a half hours since Sandra set off um, I'm down at Angle Town at the moment um, she's doing really really well uh, she finished the first leg half hour 
about half an hour ahead of schedule. Second leg was on time. So um, it's all going really well for today actually. Much, much better than last year. Really is um, it's like watching a different person. Um, next bit today now is Bowfell, which I think uh, she's probably dreading because it's such a steep bank to go up. It really becomes a challenge when you start going up on the Bowfell. You get onto the rough ground then, and you've got quite a lot of miles in your legs then. And if you haven't done the correct training, that's when it begins to count because you've got to conserve a bit of energy of the stony type of ground and you've got to keep your concentration together and actually start to lose time. There's a good path that goes down the side of the cracks if you, you know it. But if you just miss it at the top, because it isn't very clear in the stones, you can get off course. And it pays to have a good pace with you there who knows exactly where it's going. And you get down the stretcher box and you look up at Gable and think, have oh, I got to go up there? But once you get Gable in, it's the last big long climb. We know going up the Cape Town and up on the pillar is a long drag to pillar. You get pillar in and then it's all nice green ground all.
and uh, they've come to save talent, which is another thing on its own. This is where it makes you dig for a little last bit of energy you've got to go up that bit of steam. And that's where I get cursed at putting that one in. But it's all that stuff, so when you're coming in off by the tower, you know you're as good as all. It only takes about <coughs> 10 or 15 minutes to get the top of the uh, middle power, and then it's all down in the drain. They've come to save talent, which is another thing on its own. This is where it makes you dig for a little last bit of energy you've got. Well, it's half past 11. There's just one hour to go and one more peak. Sandra looks really, really tired. I'm really not sure if she's going to be able to make it. Well done. Go, Sandra! Come on, Sandra. Oh, he's got you on camera. Come on. When I look back to when I started, which really, if I'm honest, it's been over the last 12 months um, when I sort of the first thought of, I'd like to do the Joss Slayer. And when I first thought about it, I thought, you know, it's probably, probably something I can't do, really. It's just a dream. But I thought, once I made up my mind I was going to do it, that was it. And um, my preparation, really, Sandra. I feel as though I've been, it's taken She's over done my it. life. Come on. So long um, getting ready physically. It seems such a long journey, but it's been a hard journey. I just want to do it, so please let me. Come on, Sandra! Well done, Sandra. Oh, that's nothing, isn't it? Oh. Eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, you had a good game. You had a good game. Yeah, well done, Sandra. What a star. Amazing, well done. Well, you've had a full day anyway, haven't you? <laughs> you haven't wasted any of it. Long little bit. <laughs> Well done, Sandra. Well done. Ah, yeah,